Okay, so I just popped the hood on the Ford. Gonna work on that a little bit more today. And I'm gonna try to figure out why I can't connect with the uh, OBD2 reader. Okay, something I forgot to mention here. Uh, pins four and five right there are both grounds. And pin 16 right there, that is a power hot at all times. So definitely, before you check these continuity tests here, make absolutely sure that you have ground, ground, and hot at all times power. So if you don't have battery voltage or ground on those two pins, that's going to be the first place you want to start before you start doing continuity tests. So I went ahead and 10 millimeter socket, I pulled the plug off the uh, ECM. Um, I just did that a minute ago, and what I found is, might be kind of hard to see on here, but looks like there's all kind of green stuff inside those pins in the in the holes there, and also, kind of hard to see down there also, but uh, same thing. It looks like the pins are all nasty and corroded. I don't know what's going on there. So maybe that's my whole problem is a bad connection. Um, anyway, what I'm going to try to do is clean that up a little bit with a soft brush I have here and some PB Blaster. I don't know if that's going to work. Uh, I'm going to try to clean it up the best I can, and then I'm going to do some continuity tests um, from the uh, the plug there to the OBD2 connector. I got the pinouts for everything. And then uh, after that, I'm going to check and make sure I have power and ground wherever it's supposed to be on those pins and go from there. All right, so this is kind of convenient. The uh, little red thing stayed in the PCM, so makes it easier to get to these pins. So now uh, what I found is I'm connected to pin 13 right there. And then on this side, we got 15, 16. All three of those pins have a port on the OBD2 connector. So we're going to check continuity between all three. So first one there, that is pin 13 on the ECM. And that should be, I believe, this pin right there. So let's give it a shot. Yep, we have continuity. So that is one down. Try the other two. Okay, the second one here. Now I'm on pin 15 of the PCM connector. And that correlates with pin 10 right here on the OBD2 connector. So let's give that a try. Yep, same thing. Looks like we have continuity. Okay, so here we are with the third and final one. So that is 13, 14, 15, 16. So pin 16 correlates with pin 2 here, right there. So let's see what we have. Looks like we have continuity. Try it again. Alright, so the next thing I'm going to do is look at the pinout for the power and ground of the PCM. And uh, right now, it's looking like we have a connection from the OBD2 port to the PCM. And I'm not able to connect. So um, I'm going to check for the powers and grounds. And if I don't have that, then I'm going to figure that out. And if I do have it, it almost pinpoints a bad PCM. Okay, here's our next test. We're going to check the grounds. So I'm hooked to the positive here, and it comes around connected to there. That way I don't have to hold that. I got a little cheat sheet here I made. I looked through the pinout and I wrote down all the grounds and a couple hots, and then I'm not sure what this keep alive power is. I'm going to check that also, and then I wanted to check the uh, wait to start light because it's not coming on on the dash anymore. And it quit doing that when you turn the key on at the same time that the truck stopped running. So, looking at this, I haven't checked these yet, but it's kind of convenient. All the grounds are right here. We got 24, 25, 51, 76, 
77 and 103. So they conveniently placed all the grounds together that I wrote down on the list over here. So let's give it a shot and see what happens. That's the first one. 11.52. It's the second one. 11.73. Third one. 11.74. The fourth one. 11.74. Fifth one. 11.73.74. And there's our final sixth one. Oh. Oh, there we go. I didn't have a good connection. Okay, 1173. I'm going to check that first one again. I had lower reading on that. Nope, I still do. Huh. Interesting. Yeah, it's slightly lower. Actually, it's 11.62. It's hard to read that thing. But, uh, so yeah, that, that first one there, for some reason, has a slightly lower reading than the others. So... All right, well, it looks like we do have ground on all six pins, though. All righty, so we have 71 and 97 are power, and then whatever this 55 keep alive power is. So I have not checked them, but I've looked at the pin out. This would be 55 right there. And then way over here, that one is 71, and that's 97. So I reversed the... Uh, alligator clip there so here's 55 that is keep alive power get a good connection on there it's like 11.65 volts okay next one is pin 71 huh don't seem to be getting anything there okay let's try this one um, nothing there either. That's 97. So, yeah, for some reason I'm not getting any power there or there right now. Um, I do have the, uh, ignition on, so I'm not sure what's going on with that. I'm going to have to look into that. Okay, so looking at it, that pin 71 and 97, um, on the flip side here, there are those two red ones right there that you see. Uh, don't really know what's going on. Um, I do not have power there, and I've already checked all the fuses, obviously, so I'm going to go through and check the fuses once once more and uh, try to find out why I have no power to the PCM. Well, kind of excited now because I do know that there's no power to the PCM on those two pins. Um, yeah, I've checked all the fuses one more time under the hood and uh, under the dash here. And everything's good. All the fuses are in the slots they're supposed to be. There's nothing missing. Um, next thing I'm going to have to do is some research and find out where those power wires are getting their power from and see if there's a broken wire somewhere, which I doubt two wires would be broken. Um, I had this problem one time before on a minivan, and I did actually have a bad wire in the harness a couple feet from the PCM. Um, again, I doubt that two wires have that issue, so... I'm assuming whatever's feeding this thing is uh, maybe there's another fuse in line somewhere I'm missing or um, or a plug, maybe a corroded plug somewhere. So I'm going to do some research and continue on. All right, so I did a bunch of research, and as you can see in the background here, the old Ford Explorer has the hood popped because it looks like there might be a relay missing out of here, which is insane because the previous owner was driving the truck, and it just died on him. Um, and it never restarted. He didn't say anything about pulling any fuses or relays. So anyway, I'll show you what I'm working with here. So if you take a look, you'll see, uh, no relays anywhere. So I looked into them and what it looks like is this bottom one. Some diagrams call that R1, some call it R5. Either way, it is powertrain control module. So kind of makes me think there should be something there. Um, I got this fuse. Now, it's for a Ford Explorer, so I don't know if it's going to work. No, I'm just kidding. But I uh, got this fuse, or this uh, relay, out of my uh, Ford Explorer. Let's put it in there. Now, I have everything connected up here. got the alligator clip, my ground. D 
DC voltage. I believe it was this pin over here. I think that was 71, something like that. No way. There's 97. Dude, are you kidding me? No friggin' way. Okay. Well, I'm going to put this uh, connector back in here. I can't believe that. Um, All right, I'm going to put this connector back on the PCM there, and we're going to try to start this thing. All right. Give her a crank and see what happens. Weak battery is what happened. Dang it. Okay, so I've had the charger on for a little bit. Um, I just turned the key on. Dude, I'm blown away right now. The wait to start light um, hasn't came on since uh, the truck quit running. We'll check this out. Wait to start. That's crazy. I don't know, man. Let's give her a shot. Damn, battery's still weak. This is driving me nuts because uh, I have a feeling this baby's going to start. Okay, here it goes. It's been about an hour and a half charging. Wait to start. Hmm. Turns over nice, but doesn't seem to uh, be wanting to fire. So we'll continue searching. Okay, since I've had the truck, I have not been able to connect the uh, scan tool to the PCM. Um, we'll give this one a shot. This is the Matco MD1000 Pro Scan Plus. Okay, already put in the vehicle information 97 4 x 273 Give her a shot. Wow. Well, that relay definitely had to be in there because I was not able to connect before. So, um, yeah, we have some codes. Hmm. I'll have to look into all that kind of stuff. Okay, quick Google search. Um, let's see here. Yeah, a lot of those codes look like they could have been because there was no power to the PCM. Um, I'm not going to clear them yet. What I did do was unplug the ICP because if you do that, it'll put it into a uh, default limp mode. And it uh, if that sensor is bad, it may start. So let's give it a try with that unplugged. Okay, nothing. So I'm going to uh, clear these codes and get some fresh information here. Then we'll go from there. We'll see what comes up now. Okay, system pass, um, probably a good thing. Try to go plug in that uh, ICP and then try to crank it again. Hmm. Still nothing. Okay, so it looks like the uh, injector control pressure... Um, I don't know why it's fluctuating like that. Going to uh, monitor that now. That's something I was curious about. It looks like it should be 450 to 500 PSI cranking. So I plug that sensor back in. Let's give that a shot and see what we're looking at. All right, well, 
268 is the highest I saw. Um, looks like more research because that's not high enough to start it. Okay, so again, I'm new to uh, diesels, power strokes, all that. So um, I tried to do the uh, buzz test, and I got this PCM IDM uh, communication error. Did some researching and found out, huh, again, there's another missing relay. Um, the IDM relay was missing, so I went ahead and put a relay in there and also the horn. Let's give that a test. Okay, that never worked before either. <laughs> this is crazy. So... Here we are again. Um, first, let me try the uh, buzz test because I have not been able to get that to work. Okay. Wow. Okay. Counted eight um, after that long first buzz. So, it's getting crazy, man. Let's try, try to crank it again, I guess. Hmm. Still nothing, but we're making progress. Okay, so I've made a lot of progress today with the truck. Really happy about that. Um... From some research I did and talking to the previous owner, looks like he did replace the IPR, the ICP, um, some other stuff like that. Uh, and looking at the uh, scan tool here, so the uh, the pressure was definitely low, we know. Um, the injector control pressure voltage, um, some stuff I saw online is that it should be about 0.84 volts. Um, I was only getting to like 0.57, I think. So that uh, correlates with the PSI being too low. And uh, the percentage, the injector pressure regulator percentage. Now, um, it's at 15% with the key on. And while I was cranking, I noticed it got up to 55%, which is exactly what a couple people in some forums said it should be. So I believe that the IPR is working. Um, looks like the high-pressure oil pump is either bad or it's bleeding off oil through the injectors. So um, to test that, to be certain, I would need to buy a high pressure mechanical gauge and some plugs and start plugging off lines on that high pressure side there and test each uh, circuit individually. Like I guess each, each um, head, I'd have to check those one by one and also each side of the H-pop. Um, gonna see what I can do about that. I don't know, I, I don't really have access to anything like that, and it looks like that's about a couple hundred bucks to buy the uh, testing equipment. Um, one option I do have is, a guy I know has a um, few of these Fords, and he's got a lot of parts. So what I'm going to probably do is see if he has an H-pop on the shelf, and more than likely I'm just going to throw that in and go with that. Um, another reason I believe it's that is because the previous owner said that this thing would die coming up to a light. And uh, then he'd restart it, take off, and it'd be good. It did that for a little bit until it just completely quit starting. And just my theory on that is, if you're coming up to a light, RPMs are dying down, and the pump's probably spinning slower, um, coming to idle. And if the pressure's already low and the pump's weak, it's it's going to die out when you uh, you know, when you come up to the stop sign there. So I was thinking from the get go that maybe the H pop was bad, but. Um, I definitely wanted to connect that scan tool, and I mean, it never would have started anyway with those relays missing, so this video, I guess, was how to diagnose your uh, no connection issue, um, no voltage to the PCM, and uh, I guess we solved that at least and proved uh, that, you know, maybe uh, I have low, high-pressure oil, so um, thanks for watching, and catch me on the next one.